705 on September 29th. Um, I don't know if you guys have been here before, but I'm just going to go through a little introdu introductory speech and then we'll begin to hear the applications. <coughs> um, at the DRB, we hear applications for land development in the town of Brattleboro and appeals of zoning administrative decisions. Procedurally, the Developmental Review Board operates on the record. Broadly, this means that we take a clear record of testimony from the applicant and any interested parties and then issue a written decision with our findings. Applicants and members of the public should be aware that as we are on the record, this is your opportunity to comment on and provide evidence relating to your application. In the event our decision is appealed to the environmental court, the court will not take or consider additional testimony at its hearing. It will look at the evidence from our hearings, the regulations or applicable law, and determine if the evidence supports the findings and decision of the board. Only interested persons that participate in this proceeding may appeal a decision made by the board. So I strongly encourage all of you, the few of you, to speak up at this hearing. <clears throat> As we're on the record, we're going to ask that you affirm that your testimony will be truthful. This is swearing you in. Um, would the applicants or anybody wishing to uh, speak to an application please stand and I'll administer the oath. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give and the cause under consideration will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? <laughs> that still counts. Um, and I'll just note, we, uh, we appear to just have the applicants in the audience tonight and they're both sworn in. Um, applicants require a majority, of the full, a majority vote of the full board to succeed. That's four votes out of seven. If we do not have a full board of seven to hear your application, we'll consider a request to continue it. Now tonight we have five people here and a sixth who has offered to review the video of this proceeding. So you'll get six total votes rather than seven, uh, which you'd otherwise be entitled to. Um, if you want to think about this, having not considered it before you came here, that's fine. But if you'd like to try to continue to a later meeting to get the full seven votes, that's fine, too. Um, we'll have to make a motion to continue you, so just tell me. Um, <clears throat> after taking testimony, the board will close the public hearing and may vote on your application. The board will issue a written decision within 45 days of the hearing. While we may vote on an application, it is the written decision that controls the timeline for an appeal if you decide you want to, an appeal, uh, want to appeal. It should be noted that the town of Brattleboro is a party with an interest in land development applications. The town does not have a special status before this board. Documents provided to the board by the town planning department, town attorney, or other town departments will be considered in exactly the same way as information from the applicant or other interested parties would. Um, do either of you have any questions about those issues? Okay, do you both think you'd like to go forward with five plus one? Yes, Mr. Chair, yeah. Okay. Um, so the first order of business is for us to approve the minutes from our last meeting, which was, um, <coughs> when was our last meeting? August 18th. Thank you. August 18th. Uh, I'll take a motion on that. So moved. Second? Second. Okay, all those in, uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? So it passes 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Um, <coughs> I already put you folks under oath. Mr. Clerk, has our meeting been properly warned? Yes. Um, and does anybody on the board have any conflicts of interest or ex parte communications with the applicants that they need to disclose? I have had no ex parte communications, though my spouse is an attorney at Downs Rackland Martin. She does not work on this case, but she is a health care attorney with Downs Rackland Martin, so I would like to recuse myself. Okay. So that brings you down to four plus one. Um, if you'd like, we could go through our colloquy and talk to you first so you get an idea of what's going on. And if you, if you want to wait, we can wait.
but I think after chatting with us, you'll probably be able to make a more informed decision. Is that okay? That's fine, Mr. Chair. I'm just wondering, is there a way that um, that um, uh, Rebecca Rebecca Mellon can um, decide to stay on the board? I personally don't think it's conflict of interest. It's your call. But feel, I mean, if you want to recuse yourself, that's fine too. I would feel more comfortable. Okay. Thank Sorry, she's the oh, boss. That's fine. I just want to make sure. <laughs> okay. Um, any other conflicts or ex parte communications? Okay. So um, the first case we're going to hear is application number 2014-116, which is Alyssa Bork. Am I pronouncing it right? If you could come up to the table, there's a little microphone there, and we're going to ask you some questions, okay? Just sit right there. That, that bar on the table is the microphone so that we get a record of what you say and the people at home can hear you. They do watch us on BCTV, which <laughs> is beyond my comprehension. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. No. Come on. No, not that BCTV is not a perfectly upstanding organization. It's just... Scripting. You mean I, this is dry matter? <laughs> listen, as, as funny as I am, I, I don't quite see the... Excitement, but anyway, <laughs> could you tell us about your application, Ms. Bork? Yeah, I've applied to convert um, a barn that's on my property, which is detached from my house, um, to a licensed child care facility. Okay. Um, how many children would be there? Um, it would not be licensed for more than 11. Are you going to have employees? Yes. How many? Uh, likely two. Would they both be there every day? Yes. The whole day? Mm-hmm. And am I correct that there are four parking spots here? Yes. How would you do um, pick up and drop off? Um, it would be staggered for drop off in the morning and then staggered for pick up in the afternoon so that there weren't more than a couple families at a time. Um, so what if everybody wants to do five? You're going to tell them no dice? Correct. Okay. Do you know what the intervals you'll stagger it would be? Um, I don't, but it would likely be something like 8 to 8.30 in the morning and then 3 to 3.30 in the afternoon. So maybe 5 to or 10 maybe minutes to or so? Yeah. Okay. Um, and what would the hours of operation be? Um, anywhere from 8 to 4.30. Um, the driveway, I, I couldn't quite tell from your mark on your plan. Mm -hmm. Is the driveway 30 feet wide, or is that the distance from the line to the side of your house? Um, it's the distance from the line <coughs> to the side of the house. Okay. About how wide is the driveway, would you say? Um, it's about wide enough for two cars to be side by side. It would be pretty squished to do that. But okay. Um, not wide enough for two cars to pass, but... The place you marked as the unpaved parking spot, is that where the pickup and drop off would likely happen? Um, no, that's actually likely where I would begin parking. Okay. I think pickup and drop off could happen at the top of the driveway. That's by the garage? Mm hmm. Okay. And um, which of these buildings is the outbuilding? The one that you just referred to as the garage. The garage, okay. Um, and you indicated three cars can be in front of that garage? Yes. Is there room for them to back out? Yes. Uh, what, what, what's around the driveway? Is it just grass? Yeah, there's a bank on one side, and then there's just grass and plantings on the other. It's all flat? No. Where's the bank? Um, if you're facing the house, it's to the left. Is that the bank over towards the, the church in the parking lot behind the academy? Are you, are you down low on South Street? Um, I am on South Street. Yeah, if you go up South Street, I'm yeah. directly across from the Dalem Chalet. So behind okay. my house is a large field that is adjacent to the church's property and goes okay. all the way up to th the back of the houses on Fair Ridge. <coughs> so you're next door to Bacon? Bacon's? I don't actually know who I'm next door to. Hmm. I'm really sorry to say. No, just, just kidding. So you abut the Dalems? Or you're across I'm across from the Dalems. Gotcha. Yeah. And people in the neighborhood 
often use the Dalem's property as overflow parking, so I could also perhaps have a conversation with them about whether they'd be willing to have a more formal arrangement about parking if there was an issue. So when you imagine <clears throat> drop off and pick up happening, how do you imagine the, uh, the traffic flow going? Because the, the building that they need to get to is at the far end of the property. Yeah, I imagine that I would use the unpaved spot that other employees would use the spots at the top of the driveway, mm -hmm. and that an incoming family could just park in the driveway itself and walk up to the barn. But you were saying it's not an, it's not wide enough for two cars to it's get. It's not, so they'd have to back out when they were done. Mm -hmm. Where will the employees park? At the top of the driveway. The top being by the outbuilding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I should probably cut, stop calling it a garage, right? <laughs> um, so of those two spots, there would only be one place where parents who were coming in could park while they dropped off? Exactly. Yeah, there would be parking for two employees and then a third for parents. Okay. But I think the driveway um, there, the driveways, um, goes up a hill. So I think also you could park at the beginning of the driveway when you first drove it in long enough to drop off your child and then back up if parking was okay. or arrival was staggered. Okay. You can't pull off the side of the driveway, though? Mm-mm. What's between the driveway and the, and the house? Um, just a pathway and some plantings. It's flat on one part of the driveway, and then the upper half of the driveway is a hill, so mm -hmm. it's raised there. So am I correct in understanding that in order for people to leave, they'll have to back out into the street? Yes. I guess it's also possible that rather than parking in the unpaved spot, I could park at the top and people could then back out into the paved, unpaved spot and then be forward facing when they got to the road. Mm -hmm. But you can't back out of one of those spots in front of the outbuilding and go out forward? You can back out. If there's no one parked there, there's room to turn around and come back down. But if there are people parked there, then you can't do that. And what's, what's preventing you from just going over the driveway? Is that a bank, too? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. There's no possibility of expanding that unpaved parking area? Um, it's actually probably very possible. Because the lot itself is like three acres. Right. There's really a lot of space behind it, so it's probably very possible. How much do you think you could expand it? I would imagine it would be easy to expand it enough that you could have the same number of parking spots or perhaps one extra and still have room to pivot at the top of the driveway pretty easily. I mean, it's all uphill, so, you know, it right. would need to be excavated. But really, there's essentially a two and a half acre field immediately behind the barn, so. Is it possible to make another entrance on on South Main, that's essentially a, another driveway that could connect to that unpaved. She, she can't have two curb cuts. Right, okay, thanks. I don't think it is possible anyway because there mm -hmm. are culverts that carry water all the way down the property that go out yeah. onto the road on that mm -hmm. part, so. Can you speak to um, your decision to locate the unpaved parking spot and the front yard setback? Um, it was, it's just already been there. Do you think you can turn the unpaved into three spots, would it have a negative impact on the rest of the property? Um, I, don't, I don't see why it would, no. What, uh, I'm not following your concern here. 
So that pick up and drop off can all happen. Concerned that there's inadequate room for pick up and drop off. So then we should just condition that nobody can park or do a drop off on, on South Street. And then whatever problems that may cause, the applicant will have to figure out how to solve. Mm. Were you planning to have people stop on South Street to do drop off? No, I actually think it's in a spot that would be really unsafe to do that, especially with young children. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I have no more questions. Well, I think your suggestion is a good one, Spoon. Anybody else? I just have real concerns that there's not proper circulation happening in the driveway. And particularly don't like the idea of people backing out onto an active street. Yeah, the backing out is what makes me nervous. But that's normal on any road in town. In fact, every single one of the 5,000 or so uh, residences and buildings. Yeah, but not pretty everyone, much everyone. But not every one of them runs it. There's what? Not every one of them though runs a childcare business or runs a business at their house. I mean, I live on a street with an elementary school, yeah. and you would shudder to see what goes on <laughs> in the morning. I do think it's possible to back down the driveway, back into the unpaved spot, and then drive, um, out. drive out into the road, mm -hmm. if that's a concern. Okay. Well, if that's all there is, I think it's appropriate to consider a motion. Oh, and it sounds like you're the man to make it. Um, well, it's a uh, uh, condition that no uh, client or loading how do you refer to it? Loading or unloading? No loading or unloading on South Street. Okay. So you move to approve this application with that condition? Have you read a copy of this uh, draft? Have you seen a copy of it? Yeah. Correct, Spoon? Is what? You're making that motion? Yes. Okay. Second. Okay, it's seconded. Um, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, have a nice night. Great, thank you. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. Second, Mr. Chair. No rush. Ryan. Okay, so again, my name is Will Dodge. I'm an attorney at Downs Rackland Martin. Our firm prepared the application. I was going to have several witnesses with me tonight, but they're all uh, working on some of the other uh, cellular on wheels facilities that I was going to tell you about. So, uh, but I've worked pretty closely with them, and so I feel comfortable um, telling you about the site and answering some questions. Um, basically, um, the reason that AT&T is here is. <coughs> Uh, several years ago, um, AT&T acquired all of the sites from Unicell, which was a carrier that I think a lot of us who lived here sort of knew, some of us who might have been customers. And there was a sort of a division of assets between Verizon, who acquired everything for Unicell on the New Hampshire side, and, um, and Vermont, where AT&T acquired everything. And the effect was kind of like a giant zipper down the Connecticut River in terms of interconnecting sites no longer being able to talk to one another. But AT&T kept some roaming coverage uh, as an interim measure to try to ultimately build up a network on both sides of the Connecticut River. Um, and, and part of the reason for do that was to keep existing customers, but it was also about going to 4G LTE, where instead of using your flip phone for everything, you're using an iPhone and a smartphone and getting on the internet with much faster, better service. So um, in, uh, over in New Hampshire, and really right along the Vermont border, there are a whole lot of areas that you can kind of see here um, in green, where all of the coverage that AT&T customers had was really based on, um, on uh, Verizon roaming coverage. And so that included a lot of places, uh, primarily uh, up further north of here, like Bellows Falls, Walsall area, <coughs> 
further in like Alstead, but then also going over uh, further into New Hampshire, uh, down by Hinsdale, Winchester, Richmond, that area. And what happened is, um, without that coverage, there would have been, without sort of new sites, uh, Based, basically as of September 30, 30th of this year, or actually Wednesday, there would have been some pretty big coverage gaps in a lot of these areas. So a lot of AT&T's focus um, in the past two years was on getting new sites uh, basically all over this area. But what they started to notice or n not take, a, uh, take enough notice of was the fact that in Putney, Hinsdale, uh, and parts of Brattleboro, as well as Bellows Falls, what they thought would be coverage from these new sites, just, just not penetrating sufficiently. So this deadline of October 1 has been coming up, and what the company decided to do is, let's put in some temporary facilities in those three areas, Hinsdale, Brattleboro, and Bellows Falls, until we can get a permanent site. So that's kind of why we're here before you. Um, what this shows right now is um, the, co the Roman coverage or actually, not the roaming coverage, I'm sorry, but AT&T's LTE coverage that they have in the Brattleboro area. Where my laser pointer is in the middle of the screen, that's, um, that's where the site is gonna be located off of Wellington Street. And while the coverage is not, a, you know, it's not bad, there's a lot of spotty areas where you would lose service if we didn't bring something in. So the idea is with this uh, cellular on wheels or cow facility, you'll have a lot better coverage in that industrial park area of town, the portion of Route 5 basically north of the traffic circle and some of the areas around there. So if I understand, you want to put in a 75-foot temporary tower to help give better coverage in the area until you get Permanent better coverage. Exactly. You summarized it better than I Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, so exactly as you said, the cow's 75 feet tall. It's a trailer vehicle that's about 8 by 23, and it's occupying a little space. I'll show you a picture of it. There's already telephone and electrical, so we're not even digging in the ground at all. We're basically just plugging in to a meter that's already there. Um, the, the Vermont Telecommunications Authority, the Brattleboro Development Corporation, Credit, or Credit Corporation, all got involved to basically find us a spot, and so that's why we ended up on this property right next to the lane uh, building. Okay. And the idea is to stay there for about 12 to 18 months. Um, this will give you some idea of, here's that lane press building, and over here is the, um, the Achilles building, and there's a small outbuilding. The cow is basically right behind it. If we situate it in such a way that we're meeting all of the setback requirements in the industrial district, um, and to give you some idea, you know, what's on it, there's these sort of stabilizers on the trailer just to keep things from tipping. Uh, there's some concrete blocks, and then there's the monopole itself right in the middle. And on the, on the cow, as we call it, there's basically just several different types of equipment cabinets for processing different types of signals um, from different users who are trying to use their uh, cell phone or their, their iPhone. So does that mean that will be other carriers other than AT&T no. or will it just be AT&T? It will just be AT&T. Mm -hmm. um, so it's so <coughs> essentially, and, and this is sort of a vertical profile of it, as you can see, it's just a pole running off of this trailer that was trucked in and left there. Here are all the cabinets on it. This does not even have an emergency generator. If we had a power outage for some prolonged period of time, like well, let's say more than eight hours, we would more than likely just bring a generator bring a to the site. But there's nothing on it right now, so it's not going to generate you know, additional noise. There's no fuel source. It's basically just electronics. So to give you an idea of what it looks like, there it is. So it's, it's parked there already, and we've been working on it. We've got our Act 250 permit, as I show you. There, again, is that existing uh, small outbuilding. There's the, um, the power source. Here's the pole itself. The antennas are up at the top. You can see that there's those three uh, um, concrete blocks. I'll show you that a little more specifically. There's, you can see the cow where somebody gets in and goes up to <coughs> on the antennas. We've put tape around it rather than a fence right now. I think given where it's located, we're not particularly concerned about um, uh, uh, any security on it. Everything's locked up. You can't, you can't get in it really without um, proper keys. You can see these concrete blocks here right now are holding up the mass. Um, believe it or not, it's designed to withstand about 120 mile an hour winds uh, if for about a two second gust. 
if one were to come along. So it's very stable. With they just those blocks as ballast? With just those blocks as ballast, yeah. And the reason is because the antennas at the top are flush mounted, you don't have like a sail effect right. that would topple the thing over. This just shows you where that existing meter is that we plug, <coughs> plug right into. Uh, and here's the view of it from Route 5. It's very hard to see, in part because you've got other sort of uh, existing utility infrastructure. So unless you're really looking for it, it, it seems to kind of blend in, at least, you know. For those of us who are always looking for these things, I had trouble finding it, even though I was coming right up to it. So it's before the gas company and their depot, right? Yep, exactly. Right. Yeah. exactly. Between there and Achilles. Between there and Achilles. Is there something to keep kids from going up the ladder? Um, yeah, the, the ladder itself doesn't move unless you've got a key to basically get in and then have it elevate. Oh, I see. So you could, in theory, somebody might get into that cage, but it's got, I think it has a, a bar over the top of it uh, that they'll put on once everything's all integrated. Right. So um, this, by the way, was just an A&R map. We confirmed that there's no natural resources to worry about at, at our spot. There's some stuff closer to the riverbank. We're not within the shorelands protection area that we have to worry about this being too close <coughs> to the shore. Um, in terms of the noise impacts, um, there's, there's no emergency generator. There's just basically some cooling units for the cabinets. And uh, based on the specs, you hear those about you know, 50 feet from the cow, and that's about it. And you've got to be really listening to it because there's a lot of traffic on Route 5 that kind of blocks it out. So I don't think any neighbors, you know, industrial or otherwise, are going to hear this thing. Um, the radio frequency emissions, that's something that all of these sites basically come out the same, that um, the levels are about 0.1% of the FCC um, safety threshold. So in other words, uh, you're at a point where the, the RF measurements wouldn't even aren't even measurable with conventional instruments. It's, the power is so low. Um, so we're not worried about that. Um, there is some signage on some of the equipment in there saying, you know, don't touch. But um, other than that, um, there's not a concern for anybody passing by. And then lastly, we obtained, the only other permit that we're required to obtain for this is our um, Act 250 permit, and that came out uh, last Thursday. So I think um, we address all the criteria in the application. I'm happy to answer any questions about it. But um, basically, what we'd like to do, if possible, is, is get the approval as soon as we can to avoid any type of loss of service uh, in that area of the industrial district in Brattleboro. Um, I noted in your letter you said a, a realistic time for the eventual removal of this unit would be between 12 and 18 months, barring unforeseen difficulties. What might those difficulties be? <laughs> well, I would say the, um, the, the greatest risk is always that we would find a spot, think it's fine, you might think it's fine, but there might be an abutter who doesn't like it, and that creates legal risk that we have to work through the process to, uh, to undergo. So the typical permitting process that we would do on a brand new tower, where we would go through the Public Service Board, ask for approval from the DRD and the Select Board, if everything goes perfectly right, that's a 90-day process. But if it goes, if there's you know significant intervention, um, then it can go much longer than that. I also think that um, the only other impediment might be that you know normally the budgeting process for wireless facilities. If you think about it, so much of rural America does not yet have reliable service. Vermont's getting much better. New Hampshire's getting better. But those dollars need to go all over the country and different regions compete for dollars. So the budgeting process can affect sort of who gets what and when. But I can tell you that this, that these three Connecticut river cows, as I call them, are very, very high priority. The company's taking it very seriously, putting a lot of resources into it. So I have every expectation that come 2015, there'll be a budget item, find a new site for, you know, for Brattleboro Industrial District. And it may be that we end up you know, right around here somewhere. I was speaking with the zoning administrator, and this generally seems to be a very good area to put a tower, even though they're tall, because A, the need is there, and B, um, it doesn't, it's not going to affect any <coughs> residential views, which is usually where the transition <coughs> comes in. As, as witnessed by 
all the abutters in opposition. Well, we had 35 abutters, and so if that makes you feel better about your decision, well, that's you received I mean. notice, and no one's, no one's well, given us so much as a phone call. I don't think you got that same response everywhere in the last six months here, have you? Bellows Falls, let's just say, that might be why I look a little tired. <laughs> We're up there working pretty hard on that one. If there were a two-year limit on our, um, condition, our, our site plan approval here, would that be enough time for... It, it would, Mr. Chair, and I think what I would do is if you put that condition on and we needed to come back, then right. I would, you know, right. try to time everything so that we get on the agenda at the right time to extend it. So there's not going to be a fence at all around it? No, and I'll tell you, the reason that we didn't, we don't like to put fences is because if we disturb the ground at all, then we need a whole separate approval under the National Environmental Policy Act. So we're at pains to not disturb ground if we don't absolutely have to. But you know, good fences make good neighbors. <laughs> There's not many neighbors around. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll note that the applicant dealt with conditional use criteria and the site plan review standards in um, its letter. Uh, that was satisfactory <coughs> to me, and I'm happy to note that for the record, but did anybody else have any questions about those factors? Um, is there anything else we want to address? That's pretty comprehensive. Yeah, very thorough. You're, you're a PowerPoint thing there said that there would be a backup generator. Yeah, and I had put that on, and I think that was true of some of the other the, the other cows in Hinsdale and Bellows Falls. But actually, this one, when I was looking at it closely, we don't have one integrated on this particular cow, so they would just bring a portable and plug it in if right. they needed it. You'd be okay with that being one of the conditions? To uh, what, what, yeah, what, no what permanent would that generation. Condition mean? No permanent generation unit. Yeah. yeah. I don't even think, Mr. Chair, that you would need it as a condition because yeah. we haven't even proposed it as a design. I think we would literally just, you know, the Home Depot ones, we'd bring it on the ground and bring right. it in. Um, I mean, what was nice about this one, unlike the other ones that we have, is the power was literally right there, ready to go. So uh, it it's, makes it much easier than the other ones that we're looking at. If there's a two-year limit, that probably precludes putting in anything practical. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm content to leave it off if the rest of you are. It was just a suggestion. Just a friendly suggestion, Joe. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody else have any other issues they want to talk about? I think it's you, appropriate. You, you oh. must have put up quite a few of those things, right? The same sort of deal. So you, you're obviously comfortable with its, whatever, security, secure, secureness, yes. whatever. So yeah. I, if you felt there was a need to somehow have that thing fenced without it going into the ground, I, I think I just you're, you're, a, you're a lawyer. You, you, you're advising this yeah. company. We talked. We talked about it, and we thought about it. But we we're thinking that where it is right now, because it's sort of off from everything, yeah. we really don't. We really don't need it. Right. Um, I think that if there were a pro, if a problem arises, and either we hear about it ourselves or we hear about it through the town, then maybe the sensible thing to do is to um, come back and propose something. Maybe we can put a a fence that doesn't actually disturb the ground, like that just goes around it. But if it's the if it's the preference of the board that we do something like that, put some kind of security fence around it, um, I think that's a condition that we can live with. It just may take us a little while. Yeah, that's the no, 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 I wasn't. Just I wasn't. as long as it's, for me, I, ju I just know from high school years that area is frequented by teenagers. So, yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, as, if you feel that it's, that it, the cabinets and the equipment and you know no one's going to be running up and down the thing and jumping all over it if you feel pretty good about it then I, feel like I think as long as that ladder is secure that's the one that seems to me yeah, yeah. understood but if we were to decide to put a fence would we need to come back for approval I don't think so. If we get a, a standing, non-installed, non in other words, it just literally sits on blocks. If it's under eight feet, I think you can do that without anything. Am I right about that? For residential use, but I think in this case, a temporary fence under eight feet would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those construction ones that's free standing. That's what I was thinking yeah. about. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have done that, done that once or twice before. Usually it's special events. We'll put one around, you know, with their, you're like an affair or something like mm -hmm. that. 
but we might be able to do that. Are these similar to the uh, portable cellular networks that they put up after a tropical storm Irene? When yeah, the, that's exactly what this is. So this is a disaster recovery vehicle, module basically, or module. Yeah. yeah. So the same one was used in Newfane and Dover after right. Irene went. That's what I thought. Yeah. And they didn't have good service anyway, but it was really bad because the mudslides took out their fiber in those towns. So it, it basically the mudslides, you know, cracked <coughs> everything. Mm -hmm. So they put it up temporarily. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some people in Newfane wish it had never left. Mm -hmm. Well, what was funny is that when we tried to permit a permanent, we got all kinds oh, of opposition. Oh, boy, did you ever. <laughs> all right, well, so, okay. anyway. If it's appropriate. It's working out. If you guys are all satisfied, I think we should have a motion here. Motion to approve. Second. Whatever it is. Well, my suggestion was to approve uh, it with a two year limitation. Is that? To approve with it. Two year limit. As long as that's okay with you. Yeah. It's okay we, with them. Do we have to word that in a certain way so that he, it's, he can come back in two years or no? Um, the two year limitation providing that the applicant can return for more time. How about that? Does that sound okay? All right. Sounds, sounds good. So moved. <laughs> so moved. Okay. Seconded. Second. Any more discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. I mean, the, missing that meeting was certainly a party foul on our part, but now you get the Patriots on Monday Night Football. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm here. sorry. To well, no, 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 you're perfect. <laughs> you're perfect? Yeah, yeah, you're more than perfect, yeah. <laughs> but you've got a motivated board here. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, would, would you do me a favor and tell Miss Ballant that she can return for oh, sure. our regular business? <coughs> if you could flip up the center switch on the left, too, that would be nice. What is that, 401? Thank you. Is that 401? Hey, what? 401? On, the, on that one? Is that what that would be? I still don't know what you're talking about. The decision on that one you just did, because she recused. Is that 401? Oh, uh, I would say that that is 400. Okay. She yeah. Abstain or recuse two different things. I think so. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I don't have Robert's rules memorized, but I, the, point, the point is he's got four votes. He needs four <laughs> So, anyway, uh, Brian, you had some business you wanted to bring up. Yeah, it's just um, I, I gave you the flat plan for a subdivision that was done last year. It created a new board between the two residences. And the order, as, as they proposed it, actually bumped out around the dormer or some other feature on the house instead of being a straight line. You know. mm -hmm. It's just so at the time that didn't seem particularly problematic, although you know the code has a preference for everything like that linear. However, for the owners, it actually turns out it is being a problem because they're trying to negotiate between the neighbors, have to put in things like fences and where to keep their dogs and then maintain the yard and the yard kind of intermixes. These two abutters are trying to negotiate that? Yeah. So okay. the, this is a case where the <coughs> line is, as it was approved, is really fighting against how the owners are trying to use it properly. Filing up routine things like maintenance. Uh, where is it? Some over at well, yeah, I it, remember. Oh, where they the sauce and chopped those three things yeah. up there. So what? Yeah. What exactly? Had, but the neighbors were not opposed at the time. The neighbors didn't own it at the time. Right, it was just their sauce at the time. Their sauce owned it all. For some reason, proposed it and sold it, and now the new owners are trying to live with it. And you know, not doing well. It's just proving challenging, you know, as, as they say. Um, asking about fencing. Well, it is a crazy lot line, and it's not one I think we would normally like to do, except that the building actually cut across <laughs> the original one. Right. So, so something had to be done, and as long as something had to be done, we made it the minimum t 10 feet, right? Yeah, but in this case, it could have been just a straight wall. I, you're suggesting it should have, we should have just moved the whole darn thing. Yeah. For a few well, years. I thought of that, but I guess uh, Sir Sassima won the whole thing, right? That's but he, so what? Um, 
What's the question? So they're, ha they're having. <laughs> this is just for us to consider. This is just feedback. At the time that oh, okay. the planning department students suggested that you guys should stick to just keeping everything right in linear and straight lines and that it's simpler and easier. And in fact, it's true that having this irregular border is in fact complicated and creating. In hindsight, what do you think our better answer might have been? Straight line. A straight line where though? At the house or 10 feet out? 10 feet out. Or, or split the difference or something? Yeah, split the difference because it was already known before we for side yard setback. So even if just So what you're saying, what you're trying to say is it would have been, not, seeing it now, the proof down the road, it would have been interesting to be able to have the foresight to have seen that calamity down the road. Yeah, I just don't think it really occurred to anybody on the board that it would. Yeah, yeah, like who wants to make a fence go like this? Right? Who owns and is, does Sir Sassimo own either of them now? No. They're, they're all sold. All three of them are sold, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, <clears throat> that was a, a beautiful example of, what, uh, what do you call it, uh, at water, instant house. I don't yeah. know if you watched how that occurred, yeah. but. That really, that, that thing there, they bought one house with a big lot and they sliced that up and put in two little gingerbread. They're tiny too. Uh, they're only two, yeah, they're they're only only two 20 by houses. 20. I think they're 20 by 20 or 20 by 24 mm -hmm. footprints, two story, and those went up like, like dandelions. Mm -hmm. They just jumped into place there. Brian, under the proposed new. Um, Subdivision ordinance. This would be an administrative call, right? Same owner, to property line it. adjustment. Yes. Yeah, we'll okay. So now that it's two different owners, are they asking for help in a solution? No, no, no. No. This no, is us this is just considering our own follies. Right. But I'm just curious if they came to the board right now and asked for. <clears throat> some mediation or some resolution. We can't do it because I mean you'd be sure asking. Sure, you could if they were willing to. You, well, if, if they could, had it, re if they asked for a waiver and had it resurveyed to a different line. Yeah, if they we could make it any line, a straight line. You could put a straight line up and down there anywhere. Or oh, I don't. And, and they could balance it to where they each gave an equal amount so that the yeah. overall square footage roughly juggled. I would go to a point at five feet. Yeah. From the middle of the wood frame building, and then from that point, straight lines parallel. No, not even parallel. Uh, uh, straight lines to the existing ends of the boundary line. Would you? So it would, would still be, be a crooked fence. Yeah. Well, it would look just slightly bowed out, but it would be close to being straight. Mm. But you're postulating your idea of a design on that angle on that line, and frankly, they could come up with their own idea they could. and some balance and propose a waiver and a research. I'm just line. giving them the yes. best yeah, right. possible. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all giving the them the benefit of all my wisdom. <laughs> right. So at this point, they're not asking us to do anything. No, just trying to figure out how to live with it. But when, but when you, it is, so. wouldn't you want to make? If you had to make an adjustment though like this, because going down the middle, wouldn't you want it to be 10 f feet though? Because you don't want to create, you don't want to keep a property non-conforming, because we always try to bring it back into conformance. Wouldn't you at least around the building want to make it 10 feet? Well, but if that's what you're doing, technically you're asking one person to give that 10 feet to the other. Yeah. And that's a that's more of a stretch than if you were the two of them were standing out there in the street trying to say, "Hey, we each got this many marbles. How can we divide them in yeah. half?" Yeah. Yeah, but they, a line But I'm ju I'm just saying as a, as in general in general terms yes, we right. we that's would not to want to create an, and that's another close enough to being off. straight that's true. That yeah. And they split the difference in land. One bit. Right, so they try to All right. Okay. Any other business? Nope. Spoon, you made all the motions tonight. You may as well uh, complete uh, the grand I, slam. I motion to adjourn. <laughs> Any uh, second? second? Second. Any discussion?
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.